February 26, 2015 meeting of the Public Safety Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Chairman Ancelo? Here. Mr. Baroth? Ms. Boyce? Here. Mr. Howland? Mr. Willie Lightfoot? Mr. Marionetti? Here. Mr. Michike? Here. Mr. Morelli? Mr. Yolovich? Is there anyone signed up for the public forum? There's not. Is there anyone present who's not signed up to speak who would like to address the <coughs> committee at this time? Yes, there is. Come right up. My name is Tom Gregory. I live on Blossom Road in Brighton. Um, I'm going to speak to uh, an issue I spoke just to in the uh, last meeting of the legislature, and it's on the cover we have here, uh, Mr. Yolovich's uh, letter, which is signed by a, a bunch of you, and I'm going to say basically the same thing I said during the legislature of last uh, month. Yeah. You know, I, I'd like to see the term Islamic taken out of the taking out of this. M m I know it doesn't go, it's a, it's, a th it's a memorialized statement, not anything that has uh, any more significance than that, but it has a lot of significance from my point of view. The reason why I object to in using the term Islamic radicals or whatever is because we don't really know where these people are. We know they're nuts. We know they're terrible. We know they're murderers. We know they have no respect for life. I think under criminal law, it would be called depraved human indifference or something along those lines. And maybe they also think they justify their acts by some religious reference. But I, I don't think that it's for us to tie Islam to their acts. Whether we, by the elimination of a simple word, Islamic, or a reference to a religion, now, I happen to have read parts of the Quran. I'm not Islamic. And, and that's parts of the Quran in English, I think, well, neat. But I find a lot of that is also preached in the churches I used to attend, and also the synagogues I've attended for a period of about 10 years. And I don't need three religions. I already got two. I was baptized or circumcised a Jew and baptized a Christian. Don't ask me how that happened. But I don't need a third religion. But I understand how Islamic individuals might feel when them, peaceful, loving people, are tied by a resolution from us, which, to tell you the truth, a lot of people can't distinguish. I mean, I, I'll tell you honestly, I, I, I sat back and I, the first thing I thought about, here we are, we're saying, poo poo, you know, there was a, we showed Muhammad in a way that none of us would want to be, or at least few of us would want to be. My thoughts turn, if I might just a minute or more, my thoughts turn to the uh, art piece, if you remember, called Pissed Christ. Remember that? Or Linda, Linda Blair's misuse of the crucifix in The Exorcist, and how many of us Christians got upset about that. And I sit back, I say, you know, I believe in freedom of speech too. I mean, I'm exercising it right here. But you know something? with my freedom of speech also comes a duty and responsibility to utilize it with utility and properly. I'm not justifying the acts that happened over there or any of the acts referred to in this document. But I am saying that I don't think Islam has anything to do with it. And I would ask you, please, take our reference, take that reference to Islam out. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. You have the December 15th, 2014 minutes before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. The next item on the agenda is new business. Referral 15-0004. Moved by Legislator Michike, seconded by Legislator Boyce. Is there any discussion? Legislator Barat. Thank you. Um, to the Chair of the Administration, I just have a couple of quick questions about this. Um, the first is, is the reference is a five-year exercise and training plan, um, and my question is, is that training plan something that's already in place in need of updating, or is it going to be an entirely new plan? 
uh, through the chair, it will be an updated plan. An updated plan, thank you. And through the chair of the administration, did anyone else respond um, besides the MCC camp, MCC to um, uh, the notice for this? Through the chair, there were three other respondents. And who were they, please? Through the chair, uh, I know one company was uh, Tetratech, another company was, I believe, A6A, and the third company, I can't recall, but I can get that information to you if you'd like. Um, yes, please, that'd be, uh, that'd be helpful for sure, thank you. Through the chair, I will do that. Yes, Vice President White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can we also, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration, have a copy of the plan, the updated plan? Through you, Mr. Chairman, the administration. Through the chair, do you want the current plan or do you want the, up, the plan once it is updated? the training and exercise plan? Uh, I'd like both. Through the chair, that's no problem. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The item carries and next item is approved. Referral 15-0005. Moved by Legislator Boyce and seconded by Legislator Holland. Is there any discussion? Yes, Legislator Brown. Thank you. Um, through the chair of the administration, how much money did the county receive from this program last year? Through the chair, Jennifer Curley from the sheriff's office, um, $32,000 we received. Thank you. And through the chair of the administration, oh, Andrew, what sorry. fund in the budget receives these proceeds? Through the chair, it goes to um, operating budget revenue. Oh, revenue. Thank you. And finally, through the chair of the administration, and I do not know if you have the answer to this, but I do know that um, recently, uh, several weeks ago, Attorney General Holder announced that he was going to be um, um, curtailing or ending the, these sort of um, um, sharing programs for, for forfeited cash and such. Do we anticipate some sort of impact on our uh, future revenues from this source of funding as a result of that? Uh, through the chair, Dave Marion from the District Attorney's Office. Uh, we've been following that uh, with a quite a bit of interest ourselves in the news, and we received actually some correspondence only about an hour ago uh, from, uh, which I have not actually had time to review yet, I wanted to make that clear, uh, from the U.S. Attorney's Office in Buffalo. Uh, they are going to be amending some of their procedures. Uh, the subject line of the uh, memo is policy limiting the federal adoption of seizures by state and local law enforcement agencies. Um, again, this is a I would say about you know 12 pages or so, which I haven't had the opportunity to review yet. It just hit my desk, but it would appear that some changes are going to be made. Uh, we're going to be reviewing that, and we actually have a meeting uh, with some folks involved in this tomorrow. Thank you. Then through the chair of the administration, I'll, I'll raise this question again at Ways and Means um, in, in a couple of days, and hopefully um, by then um, the office will have some more information. Okay. Through the chair, yes. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Legislator Boyce. Through the chair, um, can you tell me um, also, uh, do you have equitable sharing with uh, other agencies throughout Monroe County? That would be to the district attorney's office, please. Through the Chair, Commander Fox and Sheriff's Office, the, the bulk of uh, seized funds come from the DEA as they are the lawful authority through the federal government through the Treasury to seize assets. Um, Civil Bureau, of course, has assets of a different type, and there may be other assets that I'm not aware of, but I'd have to research that to give you a truthful answer. But the DEA is the primary source. Okay, thank you. Any, is there any further discussion? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to, uh, to um, is it possible that after you've had uh, some time to uh, review the document that you received, you could uh, provide uh, our office with a memo on those details? Uh, through the chair, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The item carries. Next item, please. Referral 15-0006. Moved by Legislator Holland, seconded by Legislator Marionetti. Is there any discussion? Yes, <coughs> Legislator Lightfoot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, for you, Mr. Chairman, the contract is for uh, nine million eight hundred seven thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars. The original contract was for ten million five hundred sixty-four five hundred thirty-one dollars. Why has this amount gone down? For you, Mr. Chairman, take the next question. Through the chair, the original contract was a five-year contract. This is a one-year extension amending the original five-year contract. I'm not sure that it is a different amount. It's just a, a different term. But I can research that to get you a better answer. Okay, thank you. Um, following up, for you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration, is this the last year that we're able to uh, renew before there's a new RFP <coughs> created? Through the chair, this is exclusively court security through the state. I don't believe it's an RFP. It's contracting with the state to provide a service that's mandated. Okay, thank you. Um, how many court security officers are, do we currently have now for you, for you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration? We currently have approximately 117 court security officers, and we have an academy class, 112. It's about 112 through the chair. Uh, we have an academy class coming up in June. We'll be hiring 16 which has been approved by the uh, court security for the state. So um, my next question to that is, out of the 112, um, what is the diversity makeup of, of that, that security, current security officers that you have now for you, Mr. Chairman? Yep. Through the chair, I do not have the information with me. I can certainly get that for you. I can tell you that uh, uh, one of my responsibilities is in charge of recruitment, and a uh, strong diversity push has been put on through the chair for many years, but in the past two years, uh, we've made uh, very aggressive efforts, particularly with the Pathways of Public Safety program uh, out of the city of Rochester schools. You may have saw that in the paper. Uh, we hired four minority cadets this past year uh, with the goal of hiring them futurely into any of the bureaus or civilian positions. Uh, one of those cadets has been promoted to the trainee position. She's a college student. One was put into a private college, and we have two we're writing recommendations for college now. We will be hiring four more minority cadets, um, actually interviewing them in the next week myself. This program allows them to work as a paid high school intern and to learn about the different bureaus. One of the challenges for hiring the court is people don't know about it. Similarly to the Civil Bureau, it's just not common knowledge. People recognize police. So we're using programs like this to provide a better informed public, to recruit them more effectively, and to give them, uh, to help them learn about the sheriff's office and build that relationship before they take the exam. Okay, thank you. I, I look forward to, to getting that breakdown uh, of the 112, uh, the diversity breakdown. Uh, and I commend um, the administration for working in the Pathways of Public Safety program. I mean, the fire department, obviously, the fire department also works in that program, and that is a great way. It's got many members uh, on the department, it's great members um, and, and that come through that diversity, that have diversity that come through that program. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. Uh, that our county is working on that and being a part of that program, and that there also are um, efforts to um, to increase our diversity in our county sheriff's department. I think that should be a priority, um, especially with many of the people that they're serving um, of that population. So I thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Legislator Blades. Of the uh, stated amount here, do you have a breakdown of the, of the amount of overtime in the court system? And I, you, I'm, I'm sure you don't have it with you now, but that's through the chair. If if you ha if you, I'd just be curious. Uh, we have to look that through the chair. I have to look it up, but I, I can tell you that in this particular contract, uh, mm -hmm. the overtime must be approved by a judge, oh. and, and must be mandated. The contract does not allow for any other overtime. Further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? And the item carries. Next item, please. Referral 15 0007, acceptance of a grant. Moved by Legislator Marionetti, seconded by Legislator Yoder. Is there any discussion?
favors should be tried by ten ayes. Aye. Opposed? The item carries. Next item, please. Referral 15-0008. Author Moved by Legislator Yolovich, seconded by Legislator Michike. Is there any discussion? Yes, Legislator Barat. Um, through the chair of the administration, I know this is a contract for um, four years, or so five years actually, and so I presume the past contract for five years as well. I'm just somewhat surprised. We're talking about chemical photo processing here, correct, through the chair? Through the chair, correct. The primary use of this is the, in the event that you had to use a print photo, which is not common these days. So we typically use a disc, uh, digital disc for just about everything. We just give it to the DA, the attorneys, and that's how we primarily do business. In the event that you had an older case, like say a Kaylee Poulton case no. from the 90s, 2000s, okay. you'd have to pull the negative uh, or, or a really old cold case, like the one that worked in Livingston County today. You have to pull the negative to get a print photo. There aren't a lot of people who do that anymore. So this contract is mainly for that purpose. Okay, thank you, makes sense. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The item carries and the last item, please. Referral 15 040. Moved by Legislator Michike, seconded by Legislator Boyd. Is there any discussion? Yes, Legislator Barat. Thank you. Um, I just want to disclose that I'm employed by RIG. Thank you. Legislator Lightfoot. Uh, yes, I do have a question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the funding is 40000 is the first year of the grant. Uh, it will pay the portion of the salary for a probation officer. How will the probationers be identified for this conflict resolution? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. Uh, Bob Burns from the Office of Probation. Through the chair, uh, this is a two-year grant, and that uh, $40,000 will, will be spent on officers' salaries and, uh, and on overtime. Uh, there's a dispute team that will be created, uh, comprised of probation, New York State Parole, Rochester Police, uh, the Crime Analysis Center, the District Attorney, uh, and I believe Pathways to Peace. And uh, through that team, we'll identify uh, gang di disputes that we are concerned are going to lead to gang or gun violence. So the team will be making those uh, identifications. Okay, th through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. Our being that there's limited funding um, and it's two years, so that 40000 uh, is split between the two years? Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. Okay. So being that you have a limited amount of resources, are you targeting certain neighborhoods or, or, or are there other uh, indicators that show um, more need in, 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 this, in another neighborhood than the other? Through you, Mr. Chairman, through administration? Uh, through the chair, this is a um, fairly small part of a larger uh, um, program that the RIT Center for Public Safety Initiatives uh, has been working on. It's a problem-oriented policing uh, initiative that they're working on. Um, the uh, restriction is to the city of Rochester by the funding. The funding comes through the United States Attorney's Office, so it will be only in the city of Rochester, and the neighborhoods will be wherever people reside, uh, where there's uh, conflict disputes going on where that might lead to violence. That tends to be uh, the, the same high crime neighborhoods in our city. I can't name them right now. There's no specific list, but they are those with the highest crime rates. Right. So most likely we'll be talking through you, Mr. Chairman, the Crested area and people commonly referred to uh, and often talk about the South District, correct? Uh, through Mr. the Chair, that, that might be accurate, yeah. Um, it was it possible to get a copy of, of this plan um, to, to this body? Uh, through the chair, that shouldn't be a problem. It's it's RIT's plan, but uh, I think we can share that. Thank you. Yep. Legislator Boyd. Yeah, through the chair to Mr. Burns. Um, so what you're insinuating is this is the part of the GIVE grant? Is that what? Or, yeah. Uh, through the chair, there are some similarities. The okay. problem, problem oriented policing is part of GIVE as well, but it, it is separate. It's, uh, this is federal dollars through the U.S. Department of Justice uh, as opposed to give being uh, s state funding, but the objectives are the same. So will they be complementary in nature through the chair? Uh, through the chair, yes. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in 
favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed, the item carries. Are there any, any other matters to come before this committee tonight? Okay. All right, seeing none, uh, the January 26th, 2015 meeting of the Public Safety Committee stands adjourned. And the next meeting of the Public Safety Committee will be held Monday, February 23rd, 2015 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you.